Hello, this is Bryce, and thanks for tuning into my YouTube channel, Jack of Trades. It's been an exciting couple of days here as we've made improvements to our Tamiya Lunchbox build um, and our efforts to make it the fastest CW01 chassis. Uh, we were getting to the point in speed where it was getting difficult to control the vehicle, so we focused more on stability, um, and once we kind of got that stability, we then shifted our focus back to getting it faster. Um, so I'll get into that uh, in the rest of the video. Uh, thanks for watching. Let's move on to the build. So I started designing and printing some parts for this uh, build. Um, here we have the swing axle brackets. Uh, I got rid of the slot for the pivot and support the pivot now with bearings. Um, I then went on to design um, some lockers um, that would drop into the existing differential gear. So with these parts printed, um, we begin the assembly with some uh, putting the uh, gearbox back together. The new swing axle brackets um, also extend the wheelbase of the vehicle by 20 millimeters. Uh, we did this to try to help make it a more stable vehicle for the speed runs. I replaced the stock spring shocks with some oil-filled shocks. I ended up using a set of new shocks from the Team Associated DR10. Uh, the assembly of these shocks are pretty straightforward, uh, more so than the installation of them. I kind of had to uh, finagle um, how to mount them uh, to the vehicle. One of the problems I had with the new extended wheelbase was that the rear shocks were now hitting the motor. Um, so I had to move the top mount locations to the rear of the chassis um, so that the shocks would clear the motor. I noticed with the lunchbox that the front wheels tend to catch, uh, so I wanted to put some low traction front wheels um, on the front of the vehicle. Um, basically to help minimize how much they would catch um, and then with the locker that would kind of help guide the vehicle in a straight line. Alright so here's today's mods. We um, put in some new ch uh, like a swing axle brackets. Um, we extended the wheelbase by 20 millimeters with these and then we also got rid of that slot and put bearings on the pivot. Um, making it a little more rigid chassis. Uh, we put on some new tires on the rear, new wheels on the front, um, oil shocks all around. These are from the Team Associated DR10. Uh, inside the gearbox we have a locker. So I locked up the diff. Uh, that's a 3D printed part that I designed and printed today. Um, and we're still running the um, Dynatech. Uh, <laughs> we're still running the Dynatech with the 10 tooth pinion. After this run, we'll swap it out for the uh, 18, 18 tooth pinion and get rid of that motor spacer. Let's get okay. Let's do a little reset on the GPS, zero it out. <laughs> so with these tires, it, it really wants to push, which I guess is kind of a good thing, because that means it'll want to stay straight, and um, the front tires won't grip too bad and cause it to tumble. So that was kind of what I was going for. We'll see how it does. Definitely a lot more stable going straight. Cool. I don't know what it's doing. It's almost like it's. There it is. Let's see what we got. Oh! And look at that. We were slightly faster with essentially the same drive and powertrain. Um, we're one mile an hour faster. All right, so now we swapped out the pinion from a 10 tooth to an 18 tooth, and then we got 
and the reason we could do that is because we got rid of that motor adapter which created an offset. Um, so according to my calculations this is 80% um, uh, taller gearing which means we should see an 80% increase in speed so I was guessing 40, not guessing, I calculated 43, um, probably a little less. The motor, I have a feeling we're going to kind of peak out the motor's capabilities. So I'd be happy if we broke 40. Let's uh, reset our GPS. I'm gonna go with the wind this time. Definitely faster. All right, so our speed controller keeps shutting off now, but we have a new record for us. Uh, we hit 36 miles an hour on that run. That's uh, that's pretty good. It's not 43, but it's significantly faster than 25. I don't know. I had to go read up on the speed controller. I don't know anything about it, um, but we might be pulling too much current for it. Uh, I'm going to do another run just to see what happens. As I was doing these runs with the uh, stock Tamiya speed controller, um, the speed controller kept cutting out on me. Um, this is part of the protection circuit built into it. In my research, I learned that the Tamiya speed controller is only rated for 60 amps. So I immediately knew that I wanted to replace it with something that could handle more current. In my collection of speed controllers, I had a, an old Tekin 411 G2 and when I looked up the specs for this speed controller, I discovered that it was rated for 300 amps and 11 cells, which is like 13.2 volts. This would future-proof me when I transitioned from a 2S setup to a 3S setup. All right, so I put a fresh charge on the battery because my speeds are getting slower, so I think the battery is losing charge. Um, we're zeroed out here. Let's give it a go. I bet you we do 41. GPS. Right there. Look at that, 42 miles an hour. Yes. All right, we got to do it two times or it doesn't count. We're going to zero it. All right, let's try it again. That was slow. Ooh. Ooh, we rolled, we rolled. I was pretty slow compared to the last one. No, that was good. That was a good one. So we'll go back this way. Oh, one big one. Okay. What did we get? Got a look. Not 42, but still 41. Told you, I told you it was slower. Yeah. One mile an hour. All right, let's zero it. Let's try it again. Oh, 